Hello, everyone, and welcome to CID Insurance Program's webinar today. It's on a workers' comp. It's successful strategies for quoting, binding, and managing workers' comp. My name is Anae Augustini. I'm CEO of CID Insurance Programs, and I want to welcome you uh, today. Uh, today, your instructor is going to be Darby Fisher. She's our workers' comp underwriter and very good at what she does, so she's going to bring you lots of good information. I also want to introduce uh, Jacob Cole, our marketing coordinator, who uh, keeps things running smoothly behind the scenes uh, for our webinars and all of our marketing. Uh, let's get started and talk about logistics. All of you are going to be muted, um, but you'll be able to hear, obviously, uh, but not speak. So pose your questions in the chat room because really, it, questions are really important to us, and I think. They're valuable for everyone um, because we all learn something uh, when you pose questions. Even, even if you feel like it's a stupid question, just ask questions uh, throughout the webinar and we'll stop and answer them along the way. And again, we'd like your feedback again in a short survey that will pop up after the webinar. So, uh, because we, again, appreciate your feedback. So let's talk about objectives, but what is Darby gonna be talking about today? Well, she's gonna take you through the life cycle of workers' comp, sort of from the beginning to the end. Uh, so it's not just about quoting, not just about binding, but it's just the whole life cycle of a policy period. And then you're going to learn from a, a case study that will broaden your workers' comp strategies. And then she's going to go at, uh, I, I, she, sorry, she's going to make it easier for you to obtain new business workers' comp quotes and then talk about how to hold on to your renewals each year. Um, and then, you know, that the workers' comp arena is always changing, so she's, she's going to talk about how to compete effectively in that arena. So without further ado, I would like to turn this over to Darby and let her take it away. Good morning, everyone. Um, so we're going to be discussing first, I'm just going to go over um, briefly this some um, strategies for managing your workers' comp book as I get more in-depth throughout the PowerPoint. Uh, so the first is going to be efficiently managing all facets of the workers' comp policy. So you want to look at all sides of it. Um, obviously, there's the quoting with the carrier, um, but once you know you obtain that quote, uh, how to close the business, uh, managing the policy throughout the term, and then working through the renewal. Um, understanding the underwriting of all sizes of business is going to create your competitive edge when you're quoting and binding uh, business for your book, uh, presenting value-added insurance solutions, and competitive premium is key to your workers' comp production success for not just new business, but also renewals and retaining that. And um, our last key to success is to efficiently manage policy activities from endorsements to audits uh, throughout the policy term. So we're going to go in more depth. Um, our next slide is how to better analyze different workers' comp risks. So as an underwriter, efficiently analyzing and understanding your risk is imperative as you need to utilize different strategies for different sizes of business. It's not just about submitting the quote. Um, you need to understand all sides. So I want to briefly go over the sizes of business and their characteristics. Uh, so you have obviously your small business, which is that premium range from $2,500 to $15,000. So these are typically easier and quicker to quote. Uh, likely you're receiving a proposal in the same day. They don't have as many exposures. The payroll and employee count is typically lower, um, and they're not experience not rated. So most of your book is going to be built on policies of this size, uh, which will build your policy and force scale. Um, then you have your medium-sized businesses, which fall within the 15000 to 50000 in premium. So this is your sweet spot, as they help to build the premium volume within your book. Uh, they generally incur lower loss ratios, so they're more stable than a larger business on the renewal side. However, they do require a deeper analysis in order to obtain an, a, a competitive quote. Then you have your large size businesses and those are gonna be over the 50,000 in premium. So these policies are gonna add fast production volume to your book of business, um, but they're more likely to be lost at a renewal. So you'll need to underwrite these risks very carefully. 
uh, these ones have greater exposures, more accidental exposure, and higher rated class codes. So the premium range that has the most competitive edge is going to be our medium-sized businesses, um, which we're going to discuss in our case study. And this is because they're staying under the radar of the big insurance retailers that want the business. And they generally have an assigned experience mod under 100% which results in a credit for them on their policy. Uh, carriers are also more likely to place additional credits on these medium-sized businesses uh, because they also want it. So you've got to keep that in mind, um, working with your carrier. Medium-sized businesses aren't as much of a headache as the larger ones, so carriers are more willing to work with you on obtaining a competitive quote. So we're going to move forward to managing your workers' comp policy lifestyle. Uh, so this is going to be covering our medium-sized businesses, and this is just a general timeline of the policy. So you will, of course, be reviewing an Accord 130 loss runs, a supplemental application if applicable to submit to your carriers. And once you obtain that competitive quote, uh, be careful of the binding requirements. Uh, there's going to be different ones for each carrier. It could be payment details, exclusion forms, um, binding dates, so pay attention to those. And then throughout the term, there's going to be policy period changes in exposures. And then as you near the expiration of the policy, you're going to be working on your upcoming renewal for that insured. And then, of course, the audit that comes after. So there's we're going to jump right in. Um, so we did receive a question, how competitive are your markets with estate funds such as Pinnacle in Colorado? Uh, so our agency actually uh, isn't, uh, doesn't have an appointment with that carrier. Um, so we wouldn't really be able to speak on how competitive um, the state fund is. Is the, uh, basically the, the, the state fund in Colorado. and. Um, Everything is changing with state funds. Um, they are, they can at times be very competitive and, and at other times be less competitive at, and vice versa, the, the, the competitive marketplace with workers' comp carriers uh, can get very competitive. We've been writing a little, uh, Darby, you've been writing a little bit more in Colorado, which is, you know, surprised me because that means we're competing against their state funds. Um, so uh, hopefully that answers that question for you. Yeah, thank you, Anae. Um, so we are going to jump right into our first case study um, for the medium-sized business. And uh, while I walk you through this case study, we are going in-depth on the life cycle from quoting with the carrier uh, to completing their audits. Um, so Anae, if you want to go ahead and move that slide over to the next one, perfect. Uh, so our insured is Morsels and More. Um, and when I'm receiving a, a submission, I'm looking for the bulleted items uh, listed here, just to get a general idea of the business exposure. Of course, I'll be looking for further information, but these are the initial items I need off the bat uh, to receive a quote. Uh, lots of times, a court applications aren't always uh, completed correctly. They're missing the common mistakes, or they're missing the entity, or the employee count, uh, they don't have a class code, which doesn't isn't always an issue as long as they're uh, leaving a description of the risk. Um, but we need the entire application completed fully in order to receive, uh, in order to get you a quote in a timely fashion. Um, so, what items am I going to be are going to be of value when analyzing a risk? and quoting it with carriers. That's something you know we're gonna be discussing and how does analyzing a risk efficiently help give you a competitive advantage over other brokers wanting the same business. So this one is a restaurant exposure that has two locations in California. So I wanna make sure both locations are listed on the application in order to avoid any problems at audit or any claims issues. Uh, so this has 25 employees and they're an LLC, so when I am 
uh, when it comes to the binding requirements, I want to make sure that exclusion forms are filled out for the officers eligible because they are, they do take effect uh, the day the carrier receives them. And then I want to make sure ownership equals 100%. Um, payroll's at 620000 so I do know the premium's going to be higher, uh, which we have an indication here on the slide. Uh, because there's many types of different food exposures to help me understand where this business lies when quoting with my carriers, I want to be checking to see if it's a sit-down or dine-in restaurant or tavern, a fast food business, or a local deli. Uh, there is a wide range of restaurant exposures, so you need to understand the operations in order to know what additional information to be looking for. So there are a lot of small restaurant exposures that are easy to quote and do not require the further underwriting review, which I want to, you know, make sure you keep in mind for those smaller businesses. Uh, more pal palatable, easy to quote restaurant exposures would be those deli shops or small payroll fast food chains. Uh, this one being a restaurant and tavern upon my review, um, I know it's going to fall within the medium sized premium range due to the payroll and the risk summary. Uh, so you want to understand the risk as if you're the business owner yourself. That's going to be your competitive edge. So getting to a place where you can anticipate the questions going to be asked by the carrier um, so you can have this information up front is going to be the difference between you and another broker. So for me, questions I can anticipate being asked for a restaurant exposure or do they have live music? Do they offer delivery? Is delivery done by employees or a third party vendor? Uh, what is the percentage of alcohol sold at the business? Do they have bouncers or ID security checks? Uh, these are the things you want to keep in mind, and the more workers' comp you write, uh, the more um, you are able to anticipate what questions are going to be asked for each type of exposure. So we're going to go into the, for all medium-sized businesses, I want to look in depth at the risk summary. So we know that there were some claims that occurred and one that still remains open. Uh, it's four claims. Uh, with a net incurred loss of 18,000. Uh, so an experience mod is a rolling figure. Uh, so the experience mod, it was rated at 93%. It may continue to increase as long as the claim is still open. So making sure your insured is aware of the impact that has on their policy is very important as oftentimes growing business owners don't realize that this is a state mandatory remuneration and it's not something they can get away from. So that's why it's important the insured utilizes loss control carrier services and that could be your competitive edge to mention when presenting the quote to the insured. A supporting document may be requested such as the standard Accord 130. Uh, physical loss runs will always need those if they've had previous coverage and a uh, supplemental application. We're not going to see it as frequently with a restaurant exposure, but one such as contracting or um, a property management, you can expect that a carrier is going to request that of you. Um, so the insured in this case has been with two carriers in the past. So I would want to know if this is carrier or insured initiated, uh, were they non-renewed or canceled by the carrier? Uh, is this insured moving each renewal to a different carrier based on premium? Because if it is insured initiated, it's important to remember when the renewal is coming up that they have a history of moving their policy. So you want to get in front of that before another agent beats you to it. So um, after reviewing all this information, I was able to quote and bind the policy within five days. And right now, CID is seeing our carriers present very competitive quotes in the restaurant exposure. Uh, the current rates in this class are the lowest I've seen in a while, so our carriers are eager to write more of this class of business. So definitely send in your submissions. So once we've quoted and bound the policy, uh, that's really just the beginning. Uh, the, there is going to be policy period changes and exposures throughout the term. Um, so they can have payroll or location changes that occur midterm. Uh, so these need to be endorsed onto the policy. I see this commonly um, where we aren't aware of these changes until the end of the term, and at that point it's causing so many issues for the insured. Uh, so it's important for two reasons. One, 
if the insured has a payroll change and it's not endorsed onto the term, let's say payrolls increase 500,000 or 50,000, um, what the carriers are gonna do is spread that amount of premium increase throughout the following installments. Uh, if we see that right at the end of the audit, then it's all going to be included in one lump sum. So the insured's not gonna be able to pay that off as they would um, having done so had we known three months into the policy instead of 12 months. Uh, the second reason is if a claim occurs and the location wasn't endorsed onto the policy, um, it's not going to be covered. So lots of problems can arise. Uh, in my, in for our case study, this is a restaurant exposure. So you can, ex you know, there's lots of changes. They can hire a new employee or give raises to existing employees. So I would recommend checking in with your insured on this every two to three months, uh, just to keep things accurate. So um, another point for the payroll changes is if your insured hires a new employee that's performing duties outside of the class code that's currently on the policy, you need to make sure to communicate um, with us uh, before the insured hires that. Uh, because we've had uh, cases in the past where uh, an insured hired an, an employee that was performing duties outside their classification, and this was an operation the carrier didn't cover. So because they had a material change, they received a non-renewal notice. So um, speaking to your insured about the changes that are occurring in the business is going to keep your policy run smoothly. Um, as far as typical requests go, your insured may need a waiver of subrogation. So this is a contractual agreement that the, an insured may have with another party uh, in which they agree to waive their rights against another in the event of a loss. Uh, there are two types of waivers, blanket and specific. So a blanket waiver is pre a prearranged wording that covers any person or org organization uh, for where the applicable wording applies. And a specific wording is you provide us with that to endorse onto the policy. Um, in the past, we have had requests to add both a specific and blanket waiver onto the policy. However, um, per carrier guidelines, this cannot be done. You can only have one or the other. Uh, we often get the question about pricing, so it does depend on the premium, um, but most of the time a specific waiver is going to be 250 and a blanket is a percentage of the premium. Um, depending on the carrier, when a policy is renewed, the waiver will carry over to the renewal, so make sure to make a note that if the insured wants it removed, it needs to be requested prior to the renewal date and uh, the agency needs to be notified. Um, the last one is ownership changes, which I've honestly had a lot of recently. Uh, this is something you may run into and it's something you may not know how to do, but uh, once you get the hang of it, is, it is an easier process than it seems. Uh, so when an ownership changes occurs, either partial or majority, it's important for that information to be communicated to the carrier right away um, because these are not simple processes. Uh, it can take in regards to the timing it takes to get it completed, it can take up to four weeks. Uh, so it needs to be communicated to the carrier and the Work Comp Rating Bureau. Um, there's multiple parties that need to be notified. So it's very helpful to tell us prior to the ownership change happening, um, because sometimes we aren't notified until seven or eight months later, which can uh, pose a huge problem when it comes to the audit. Uh, so when an entity or ownership change happens, an updated accord application, a 601 form, and depending on the, the entity, updated exclusion forms are required to be completed. So you would need to have some, you would need to obtain all that information from your insured. Um, so then you can go to the carrier and rating bureau uh, to submit that ownership change. I do see uh, two questions. Um, the first is the quotes have a page of all the endorsements, exclusions. Sometimes I or the client wants to know the actual wording on the endorsement. Can I request a copy before issuing the policy? Um, yeah, you definitely can. Uh, carriers will work with us if 
we offer volunteer endorsements for homeowners associations and sometimes the wording isn't on the policy. Um, once we get go to the carrier, they will include that and we can send an issue that over to you. Um, so any, any sorts of endorsements, typically the change is always listed on there. And then their second question is, can you offer real time as you go billing on a monthly or quarterly basis? Uh, yes, we do have uh, a few carriers who offer a pay as you go. So you're doing monthly audits rather than one at the end of the year. Um, it, I do recommend this for larger companies because they're having uh, more frequent payroll changes and you're keeping up to date with your information. Um, it's hard to sometimes keep track of all the payroll changes that occur um, when you're doing an audit at the end of the year, um, those things can slip away with, from you. So I do recommend putting larger policies on a pay as you go. So we're gonna move on to the next slide, um, the renewal process. So renewals, you know, there is a misconception. They actually happen before the insured begins their final audit on the expiring term. Uh, this is because uh, we touch base 60 days from the renewal date. So CID's process is we're gathering updated information such as payroll, officer exclusions, location changes, and um, remarketing to outside carrier. All of that we're doing 60 days out. Um, that gives us time to work on the renewal, um, notifying the carrier of any changes, and the best way to do this is to um, obtain an updated Accord 130 from the insured uh, so you have the most accurate information. Uh, the carrier is going to issue a renewal quote based on payroll from the previous term if we don't uh, receive a if they don't receive updated payroll. So, you know, 60 days should be plenty of time to get all of the updated information from them. Um, otherwise, it is gonna slow down the process of obtaining your renewal quote, um, because once you request a change with the carrier, it can take three to seven days. So it's, it's best to get all of that information up front and it eases the process for you and for the insured. Um, it's important to also inform your insured you're marketing their account at the renewal to find the most competitive quote for them, and we'll pre and we will present the most competitive quote to you. So paying attention to the insured's experience mod and carrier history as the renewal gets closer is really important. Uh, for our restaurant case study, the experience mod was rated at 93%. So I would be checking to see uh, what their experience mod was rated at uh, for the upcoming year um, because over 100% is a debit. Uh, so if that was the case, I can anticipate the, an increase in premium. And then I would also be taking into mind that our insured has shopped their policy. So I would wanna quote with all of our markets as soon as possible. Um, so when you're remarketing an insured's policy, make sure you provide updated loss runs, payroll, any address changes, um, basically everything we had gone through in the uh, pe policy period changes and exposures. Um, so we are gonna move forward to our audits. Uh, from an underwriting perspective, audits are where I see the biggest problem. Uh, it's important for you and your insured to know that all work comp policies are subject to the audit. There's no exceptions. So when the policy renews, the previous term is not done at that point. Uh, that's a common mistake with our insureds. They'll, the insured will have an audit that has to be completed for the expiring policy term and they aren't aware of that. So the audit determines if the payroll and exposures were accurate, accurate throughout the term, which is why midterm endorsements are important to make. Uh, otherwise, the insured is gonna owe that money at the time of audit. Uh, there's two types of audits, voluntary and physical. Physical audits are the insured receiving a letter requesting payroll records from their company. And once the uh, documents are sent to the carrier, a representative will contact the insured to visit their business and conduct the audit. Um, and then voluntary audits, it's form is a similar fashion, a form is sent to the insured, but it's in, in this case, um, a representative from the carrier isn't gonna come and visit their business or take an online or take a phone call. Uh, they're just gonna complete the audit paperwork and send it back to the carrier. And this really depends on just premium size for the smaller businesses. 
voluntary audits are more frequent um, for the physical audits or uh, you're going to see that with contracting risks, um, higher payroll, higher accidental exposure. So the biggest confusion with audits is it tends to tends to be any insured who's using subcontractors. Uh, when submitting audit documents to the carrier, the insured needs to provide each of their subcontractors certificates of insurance. Um, the subcontractor's COIs should list work comp coverage that falls in line with the insured's policy date. Uh, you're going to see subcontractors often with uh, homeowners or contracting risks, not really restaurants, but uh, for an example, we recently had an insured try to dispute their audit as the subcontractor's payroll was included. Um, but when I asked the insured to send a COI so I could submit it to the carrier, uh, two things I noticed. Uh, workers' comp was not included, so they didn't have coverage on that end, and the COI's dates were outside of the policy period dates. Uh, this cost the insured $7,000. So it's so important to make sure that uh, certificates of insurance are um, collected at the time of audit. And then exclusion forms. Uh, so these can really um, determine the outcome of how much you're going to be owed. As I mentioned, for binding requirements, getting those exclusion forms are super important because officers could be included at officer minimum and maximum payroll if they aren't on file. Uh, so make sure these are completed and sent back to the carrier at the inception date of the policy because exclusion forms can't be backdated. And then non-compliant and estimated audits are released by the carrier after a period of time has passed and the insurer does not complied with the audit request. So if a policyholder does not complete the request for an audit, a non-compliance fee will be applied to the policyholder's estimated annual premium based on the specific rate for their state. Um, it's, it's easy for the fee to be removed. All the insured has to do is comply. Um, I say that all the time. It's kind of a scare tactic for the carriers, but it works because it makes the insureds comply with their final audit. Um, so audits are really a simple requirement and once you get the hang of it and you get the insured to imply, comply right away, um, you won't run into any of these things. And you can always reach out to your underwriters for assistance if there's any questions on what exactly the carrier is requesting. So I'm gonna pass it over to Anae now. Uh, yes, but there are a couple questions uh, that uh, I wanted to make sure you answered before I take I, I take over. Yes, let's see. Um, okay, so what brokerage systems uh, can you recommend for management and such? Um, Anae, do you have a little bit more insight into? Uh, well, and systems? I'm not sure what they're referencing um, in. Uh, as far as uh, uh, systems, or uh, are we talking software, quoting? Um, uh, but right now, we don't have an online work comp quote system for our brokers. Uh, so uh, everything is a su submit uh, to, to Darby. So that would be my best answer on that, unless they want to uh, uh, chime in and give us a better uh, understanding of what the question is. Perfect. Um, the next question, are loss control services self-service or can the company get someone to come out to make recommendations? Um, this is a great question. Uh, both is the answer to it. Um, so most of our carriers have a loss control a portal where you can go and get training resources, OSHA requirements, um, management and safety tips. Um, but if that doesn't seem to be helping the um, claims that are occurring throughout the term. Um, a few of our carriers do offer personalized uh, claims management services where they will work with your business, uh, see where the problems are occurring and um, why claims are happening so frequently and work with you to reduce that. Um, one of our um, clients, we recently paired with Amtrust um, and one of their claim claim adjusters to help, um, you know, reduce the claims that were occurring throughout the business. And then the third question is, what are your best and most stable classes of business? Uh, so this is always changing. Um, so it, 
right now I'm seeing um, stableness within the restaurant, um, homeowners association. I'm getting a lot of contracting risks right now, um, hotel and motel and auto. I'm seeing that right there with the, um, there may be some claims in a, a few off cases, but for the most part, uh, I'm seeing good rates, uh, competitive quotes um, and premiums. Excellent. Thank you so much, Darby. This information was so mm -hmm. great. Um, and I'm going to just close up, uh, finish up with just uh, doing a summary of, of uh, what the policy life cycle takeaways are. Um, so pay attention to all the moving parts that can wreak havoc for your insurance workers' comp policies. And that's really the point of that life cycle concept is because it's just not about binding the policy and renewing a policy. There's so much more to it that can, can cause havoc for your insured. Um, communicate with your insured throughout the policy period to confirm changes in exposure, which Darby went, uh, went over very carefully. And then treat workers' comp renewals just like new business. That, uh, that, that's a commercial insurance secret that uh, every insurance agent needs to know. And remember, remember the policy period is not over until the audit is completed. And that it's really helpful for you as the broker to, to be involved in that process to make sure that the insured um, does comply with the audit because it just causes havoc for everyone, including yourself, um, when the insured is not complying. Last but not least, I want to thank you for joining us. And I want to uh, make sure you visit our website, you know, if, if you haven't. Uh, uh, CIDinsurance.com. We have lots of broker tools. You'll see where our upcoming webinars or lots of recorded webinars that we can actually, uh, that you could go and watch today. This webinar will be up there if you want someone else in your office to watch it as well. Uh, and again, Darby's ready to, to start quoting Workers' Comp for you. So uh, her contact information is up on the screen. So please feel free, especially if you have questions, to reach out to her and uh, she'll get right back to you. Uh, and um, submit your applications today. We look forward to doing business with you. Thanks for joining us.